Hi everyone. It's a real pleasure to invite Dr. Akila, who scored 247 in the recently concluded NEET SS exam, and her dream branch is endocrine. And welcome, Akila. A very hearty congrats, first of all. Rahul, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. And my first question would be like uh, endocrine is not a specialty branch for many. And uh, which factors did you consider while selecting this specialty branch? Uh, sir, it's a specialty. It's as a specialty, endocrine is quite rare. There are not uh, many practicing endocrinologists out there, especially in the state where I am from, which is Tamil Nadu. So I'd like to uh, do something uh, to the community where uh, people are quite rare. If, uh, it's, uh, from my place of uh, state, it's uh, difficult to find endocrinologists because I have to travel to district to find an endocrinologist. Okay. So I want to do endocrinologist. Okay. So what did you find interesting in endocrinology? Because people generally tend to go for interventional fields like cardiology, uh, nephrology, or even neurology to quite an extent is interventional. So endocrinology is often thought to be like kind of a little, I, mean, I would not say non-interventional, so that will be a very little harsh word. So I would say like less interventional fields. So what made you choose? I mean, apart from that, did you find any particular interest in the specialty as such rather than just, you know, like uh, being it rare? Uh, yes, sir. It is, uh, uh, it is a research-oriented specialty where uh, you tend to see a lot of uh, interesting cases, sir. Uh, except, for, uh, uh, except for the routine thyroid and diabetes, other than that, all the almost all the cases are uh, classified as interesting cases and uh, it's um, quite fascinating to see those, sir. I think uh, it will make the journey very uh, uh, adventurous to me personally. Okay, no problem. So first of all, I should have asked this question first because whenever I see, because uh, one of my areas of interest is also endocrine as I've told you many times as is because we have been talking for quite a while. Uh, so I'm really glad that someone is taking up endocrine and there are a lot of, I mean, interest that is coming up in the recent past on endocrinology as a specialty rather than just moving on to the interventional fields like cardio, uh, nephro or something like that. And as I said, this is the question I should have asked first. How does it really feel like to finally own your dream? Um, sir, it's, uh, I, I feel very happy and... Uh... I don't know how to explain it in words because uh, uh, I just uh, uh, I was uh, personally very held up and I had a lot of things to handle, and with that I used uh, the Preplada platform. Seeing your uh, uh, videos there, so that's why that's the reason I joined Preplada, sir. And um, uh, it, it has been done quite fruitful to me, and. Uh, because all the videos are very conceptual, sir. so that was uh, I think that was the helping uh, uh, edge over the others. Okay, I, so the I study resource, I mean, which study resource did you rely upon? So you relied upon preplatter videos on one side. That's understandable. Yes, yeah. So apart from that, so is there any other standard textbooks that you relied on? So which books you read and uh, you just stick on to Harrison or you did read like uh, specialty endocrine textbooks? So just uh, Harrison, sir. Just Harrison and uh, your videos and prepare, sir. That's it, sir. Nothing more than that, actually. Yes, Nothing more than that. So you have been uh, telling about your hard work, you know, like, yes, of course, you know, like getting into any dream branch requires years of hard work, as we all know. But what are the things that you faced during the journey? So which means what, what made your journey very tough? Um, what challenges did you face? That's what precisely that's what I can ask. Sir, the, the, the very low number of seats was the only concern, sir. Uh, other than that, uh, since the videos were conceptual, I don't think I, I had any hardships during the uh, preparation, sir. Uh, yeah, the hardship very, during the preparation is all right. Uh, but what I meant is like uh, your personal stress. So because I know you are a mother. Yes, sir. Anyway, so, I mean, that, that that's what making me like even more surprised so like uh, people you know, like who are taking up the family challenges as well and people are taking the academic challenges as well and i mean just like uh 
even you know, i can understand so how difficult it is like uh, being a man so i don't engage much in the family commitments so but being a girl and taking care of the family commitments and taking care of the entire family and taking care of your md and taking care of your practice and taking care of your preparation so this is the kind of a like multi dimensional thing that i feel like i mean maybe uh, uh, with no offense to guys but i feel like only girls can do all this but actually it is uh, it was uh, quite hard because of the personal commitments but um, uh, i hardly prepared one hour daily so because i could not get any any more time that uh, uh, other than one hour so uh, that is why i uh, chose uh, your videos and prep ladder because uh, uh, i cannot invest the, uh, my entire time just to my studies because i have lot of other things to juggle and uh, since the videos were very conceptual and the neat pattern has also been changing i think uh, this year uh, nobody had any sort of one liners or all of the questions were more conceptually oriented and uh, that gave uh, that gave the my preparation an edge to uh, over uh, a one liner sir okay okay so actually to be honest like the conceptual questions if you are prepared well uh, then that actually becomes your advantage rather than a disadvantage the problem with one liners is it's kind of a hit and run policy if you know you can answer or if you don't know you cannot answer so the exam yeah. agenda itself is changing in the recent past if you see it's not only about the neat tests even for the neat pg or probably inss or inict so if you take any exam there is a kind of paradigm shift that is happening in the kind of questions that they are asking in the exam so which is a welcome move basically so people who prepare well so they will be able to really score uh, pretty well so maybe two three more questions i have for you so when did you start your neat ss preparation and how much time in your opinion uh, does one require for the preparation so or do you uh, feel like consistency like over a period of like this many years is important or just stop everything and read for 6 months so there are two different kinds of people in my opinion as far as i know so one kind of people like they just stop everything they prepare for a year or 6 months and just they go and attempt the exam so or some people like probably like uh, i mean i feel like people like you who are going to like be consistent in the preparation like over years together like maybe as you said daily one hour two hour so so what do you think which is the better way according to you and uh, how much time do you really need to prepare for neat ss and crack it sir i think uh, daily consistent preparation of short uh, short span of time would be more uh, helpful sir because uh, uh, by reading daily we can uh, at least grab a small amount of knowledge every day instead of uh, cramming everything over a short period and uh, that will help in our practice too i think because our sole purpose is to help the patients other than to uh, crack the exams it is to help the patients so in that way i think uh, if we read daily at least in, at least in hard daily to acquire at least uh, two or three more points two or three more concepts i think it will help in our practice too so i think that's the best method sir yeah I so personally... yeah i am a, a honest believer of one thing that practice and your reading are not separate both are almost the same so you read what you practice and you practice what you read so as simple as that so you practice you don't know things you come back you read something and then you go back to practice apply it and you still miss something and come back and refine yourself so this is how you fine tune yourself and in this way i think over a period of time you master a particular topic and you get better at it so and ultimately you know like you're going to crack any exam and that's not going to be a difficult task at all in the first place so anyway so you feel like this consistency during the time of your md preparation itself is enough rather than just you know like cramming a lot of stuff in the last 6 months or 9 months so that will be a better view. even i yes, honestly agree with that so it's not a problem at all and i have a one more question for you like uh, what part of the prep ladder app did you find the most beneficial so there are a lot of different areas in the prep ladder app like the videos the general medicine videos the specialty videos the yes, q bank the mock test the previous year question paper so which aspect among all these things or the interface of the platform so whatever it is so whatever you feel which is the most beneficial in the prep ladder app as a whole uh, sir i uh, watched all your videos general medicine part of the videos were uh, extraordinary and outstanding i just watched the general medicine part of the videos and answered all the question papers all the grants they used to give in every specialty they used to give i used to answer all the uh, question paper and uh, at the end of uh, the question at uh, the end of completion of that uh, question paper they used to give an all india rank 
okay. and uh, that's how i improved myself and that's how i monitored my uh, preparation also okay so how important do you feel is solving the cube back i mean rather than just sticking on the video so everyone does see the videos but uh, i do feel like solving the cube bank and the grand test and the mock test is equally important so that uh, without having an exposure to the type of questions uh, that is that could be probably asked in exams you will not be able to crack the exam so that is what my view is what do you think yes sir of course uh, before uh, cracking a type of exam you have to get experience in the particular pattern of the questions sir. and uh, prep ladder questions uh, i felt that uh, many of the questions were conceptual in uh, prep ladder app and uh, that has been uh, like imitated in the neat uh, ss examination also uh, in ss i have attempted in ss also sir and in that also i could uh, see the same pattern of questions being repeated sir so okay. i think question paper was uh, uh, prep ladder question paper was uh, very helpful to me in achieving uh, this result okay okay thank you very much uh, ma and uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the questions better like to because the pattern is changing so we cannot rely on the one liner so we have a separate team that is working upon including the faculties who are trying to you know like refine these questions into a much uh, to into a much better experience for the learners so that's what we are trying to do okay. anyways so final question so what is your message to the ss aspirants who is watching this interview so what do you think they should do and uh, maybe your personal message it's not like it should apply for everyone but what do you think they should do So uh, being consistent and being passionate about the field uh, will do the trick, I think, sir. Uh, you just have to be interested. You just have to uh, remember what you read, uh, remember uh, what you do every day, and uh, that's what that, that they are. That that's the question they are asking, sir. So I don't think uh, it will be difficult if uh, they are consistent and passionate. Okay, according to Dr. Akila, consistency, passion, the only two things. <laughs> that will help anyone achieve the dream i 100% honestly agree with that so because i am a person who believes in consistency so no matter what so whether i write ss exam or whether i don't write ss exam or whether i teach students or whether i don't teach students it doesn't matter at all so i honestly read maybe at least 30 minutes a day because sometimes i won't be getting time but i make sure that i read at least like uh, 30 35 minutes every day minimum so it might go up to 2 3 hours also sometimes if i find an interesting journal or an article but that consistency is always the key so it's not only for cracking an exam but i feel that consistency is important for just for your personal satisfaction i feel so that you have done something useful for the day anyways fine so anyway that two words what you said is 100% agreeable and that i mean that that is why i think you are in this place right now and uh, i i really i personally know because even though i wanted to learn from your perspective but i personally know what are the struggles you faced like uh, working separately and taking care of your you know like uh, child and taking care of the family and uh, along with that seeing the videos preparing it's phenomenal really like if i if i am the one in your place i don't think i would have been able to do something like this it's a, really a phenomenal feat and a phenomenal achievement and once again my hearty congratulations very very happy to see you here and i believe that you are going to go more and more and more heights and i wish you all the very very best dr k thank you so much sir thank you so much sir thank you so much ma thank you thank you